number two of the first 50 turns. Assyrian walkthrough. Strategy guide, whatever you want to call it. So in the first half, we uh, jumped all over an important opportunity. We found a free city site here. We found a free city site here not long after meeting Egypt, literally on our doorstep. And then we found a free city site up here. So we scarfed it up to uh, strategically deny it to Egypt while simultaneously trying to stay on their good side. And we cleared out a couple of barbarian camps. Well, we cleared out one barbarian camp. We're in the process of plonking that city down there, which will free up our scout at long last. And Egypt, in a little bit of turnabout, uh, got us into a war with the New Midians. Uh, as it turned out, we also met the Greeks, who were waging war on a random barbarian tribe. And they are also at war with the New Midians. And as it turned out, all of the New Midians left to go south to fight the Greeks. So, being the opportunists that we are, we jumped out with our mercenary axemen. We got in an event and started beating the shit out of the New Midian camp, which we should take next turn. Which will give us a... Uh, sixth city site. We got three down, one more on the way, and two under guard. So all things considered, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good beginning. Now, although um, the strategic decision to try and keep these sites under guard tied up our scout. We eventually trained a second one, but he's only just begun to explore the world. So we did spend a good decade or more uh, without doing any scouting at all. And that kind of blows. So it was not free, but it was strategically important. And I think it's going to wind up paying pretty good dividends for us. So, one thing though, this region is very food poor, and our, our rivals seem to be suffering from the same relative lack of food. Uh, we're all basically in the same boat there, which is why we're all roughly the same size. So, this food boost card with the 200 food, that's going to be big. That's going to enable us to uh, prepare another settler which we will need. Actually, we'll need, well, yeah, we'll need one more because we're going to get a freebie from the card. So, uh, for research in Polis. And that will give us cities on all of the sites that we are currently guarding, counting the new Midian one that we're about to take. So let's advance the clock a year and see what the future holds for the not quite great but not terrible nation of Assyria mm, the Axeman was a very lucky event because at the time we hired him our entire military consisted of one slinger uh, so Oh, good event. Good event. Wow. So do we want another point of wisdom and a point of discipline or another point of charisma and a point of discipline? I think we want the wisdom. She is going to be an amazing ruler when she takes the helm from her daddy. Mm -hmm. We lost our fish. That is very sad.
well. <clears throat> I don't want to lose that point of wisdom, so we will take no gifts. I'm going to burn a force march here to get this city down now. Okay, and it looked like I actually want to see what that is. Okay, so the Greeks are the the Egyptians are all up, all up in here. Well, that's not great. I thought we were boxing them in. Uh, don't look like we succeeded in that. But this is actually not a horrible city site. It's got two uh, sources of food. Another bonus source of uh, marble, so or not stone, whatever. Yeah, marble. Um, I tell you what, though, if war comes, I I don't know why Egypt is struggling to well. They probably, again, uh, the food poor thing, they're probably struggling to make settlers for the same reason we are. Uh, if we were stronger militarily, I would declare war on them, sweep these units away, and put these sites under guard for us. But we just not in a position to do that. So... Yeah, that's a pity. I'm just going to have to wait, though. Oh, shit. You know, I didn't attack down here. Oh, that was so stupid. I really screwed that up. And we're still going to take it. But I cost, uh, it cost me a turn and, and some more damage to do so. Alright, far and away the most important tech here is air stalkers. We absolutely need it. Oh shit. Okay, now we could be in trouble. Now we could be in trouble. I need the slinger. Oof. We've encountered the Danes. And there's no way through there. I was hoping that this was all one landmass and we could <clears throat> somehow get down here to relieve our uh, slinger. But we can't. We just can't. Uh, so what can we do? Well, I'm going to send this slinger south with all speed and hope that it's enough to I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to use my scout offensively and harvest that ore while I'm at it and see if I can at least get one of these guys to attack my scout rather than all three of them attacking my axemen. And then next year, this slinger should be able to be in range to try and take some pressure off. 
Uh, but this site is very much under threat. I don't know if we can hold it. And if we don't hold it, the Greeks will probably swoop in and take it. I like that. Yeah, that's going to give her a good mix of abilities. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've only got one order left. Here's a, a trick. Not really a trick, but something you can do to make this one order actually useful. I'm going to move here because there's scrub. Because I can cut scrub without spending an order. So, for my last order, I got 10 wood. Is it great? No, it is not. But it's better than not getting anything at all. So, we'll take it, and we'll be happy about it. And I'm going to train another slinger to replace the garrison I just moved out. And that's all we can do. I've got enough military training that... Oof. Ow. Okay. So, that sucks. Okay. I'm going to move the slinger to here. I'm going to move the scout to here. This guy... Where is his general? His general is gone. I don't know why his general is gone. I didn't see the notification that his general was gone, but his general is gone. No. No. Back those last two moves up. I don't want to do that. I'm going to move the scout to the city site. I'm going to force march him home to heal him. And I'm going to start the slinger south. That is so far from optimal that it's not even funny. But my hope is that they won't all try to beat on the scout. If they do, they're going to kill him and take the site back. And then we'll be starting from scratch. If that works... If the Slinger draws enough fire to keep the site for one more turn, then I'll move the Slinger onto the site to, to, to better secure it and give the Axeman another round of healing because he got the shit kicked out of him just then. I mean, just literally got his ass whooped. Uh, I can't afford to take the hit to the relationship, so I'm going to have to take the hit to legitimacy. I need Egypt to play nice. I need Egypt to play nice. The end. So, we're going to have to just... Even though that weakens our position politically with the families, because when you lose... Every point of legitimacy you lose, you lose a point of relationship with your families. So we're going to have to just take the hit and keep Egypt happy right now. Especially... Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. So that totally didn't work. 
So now we are in trouble. We are in trouble. Um, so we're holding off some really pissed off Numidians with a slinger. Next turn, two slingers. But yeah. Um, again, you know, this is. Don't get me wrong, the Assyrians are absolute badasses. And we won that fight, you know, to be fair, we won that fight. And then we got the event, because this was the last Numidian camp, we got that event that says, oh, here's some more elite versions of the troops you just beat, and here, you have fun with that. And, okay, well, we, as good as the Assyrians are, we ain't that good. So, yeah. We got our asses kicked. The good news is, though, if there is a silver lining, all we have lost to this point is a scout. And we were able to save the Axeman. We pulled him back. Um, he is currently in the shop, getting tended to. And this has prompted us to form our first legit fighting force, which is, you know, underway. We're, we're doing it. So, once again, uh, who controls this site is still very much uh, a question because we know that the Greeks are at war with the Numidians as well, and we know this is the last Numidian site, so we can expect that the Greeks will be coming. Um, and there's not a damn thing we can do about that. Uh, so, yeah, we need, no, we don't have the order for that. Okay, well, it's fine. And we need this site, because Greece is currently showing bigger than us. So we need this, and we need to deny it from Greece, so that this river becomes the line of demarcation. We need that. Strategically, it's very important. And here come Greece. Okay, that actually might work to our advantage a little bit, because at least they're leaving, leaving our slingers alone. Yeah, they just went full on. We need that. Okay, so... How can we... How can we best... I don't know, well, I think he can survive three shots, hopefully he won't have to, these guys have already been beaten on Greece, but we did just take the site back. Um, if he survives it, it will only be by a single point, probably, so that was risky, uh, but I feel like that's where we are in the game. We, we have to take that kind of risk. Greece is right there. They're either going to get it or we are. Right now we have it.
Tough calls. But unfortunately, we haven't been able to assign workers jobs in the last couple of turns. So, we are not growing the economy, and the economy is not in great shape. But, this has been a tense couple of turns for us, because, this, I mean, it, not to put too fine a point on it, but the future hinges, the future of Assyria hinges on this battle. you let's appoint <clears throat> we don't want anyone too old we don't want anyone who's gonna hurt for an opinion so this guy's out she's out because even though she adds to growth she takes civics and she's older She adds growth to the city, but that's an awfully high price. I don't like the four civics, although we can afford that. So yes, let's actually let's do that because that's going to help us with uh, faster settlers. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's really good. And we are going to send this settler down. So we'll backfill with the one that's currently cooking. That was our free one from the card, by the way. So the one that's currently cooking, we'll use it to backfill that site we've had in regard, like, forever. And, ah, I got a little kitten who has decided to come help me manage the series. Well, thank you, Lizzie. Yeah, I appreciate the assist. She's riding shotgun by sitting on my arm, so, my mouse arm, so... All right, let's get uh, another barracks cooking there. And that's okay. Um, we're doing the six mine thing, so we got to come over here and get that set up. And that's all the orders we got. No, actually, we won't miss our brother. He was a dick, he was insane, and he hated us, so... Actually, it's kind of like good riddance. We're going to do this to give her uh, yet uh, more charisma. So we're going to spend some money to strategically invest in a higher charisma for her. Second in line. So, she is second in line. So, I still don't want to saddle her with someone who has a negative wisdom, although he is pretty badass as a commander. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to give her somebody with a high wisdom in the event that something happens to our primary heir. Okay, so we lost a scout in the war with Numidia, short war with Numidia, uh, but we, in the end, prevailed, assuming Greece doesn't attack us this turn, and I'm rather hoping that they don't, because they're probably much strong. yeah, they're stronger than us, not much stronger, but stronger. Okay, that was huge. That is another uh, potentially defining moment in this game, and it happened on turn 32. Egypt is now on Team Zorro. We're the same religion, 
and that is going to do good things to or well, already has done good things to our relationship so that's awesome um, first thing then we're gonna do since we are uh, in great shape where Egypt is concerned we're going to send a trade mission to the Greeks we're going to try now we started the influence mission last turn so what in theory assuming everything works what will happen is the influence mission resolves our relationship goes to slightly positive so he's no longer upset with us then the trade mission resolves like the following turn and now that he's no longer upset with us we should actually get a decent trade rather than a highway robbery extortion trade and that assumes he doesn't jump our shit in the next little bit here the next thing I'm going to do is assign a general to the Axeman so that he can heal the neutral territory. I specifically picked a guy that does that. I don't really give a shit what else he does, um, but he's hurt now. And we'll be able to... I know the settler's going to be here. Actually, the settler's already here. And that's fine. But he can heal on the run then. So he, can, he and the, the Slingers can go out looking for trouble and he can just heal up on the go so cool he's done um, and while we're about it let's go ahead and assign a general of some description I don't give a shit who or what just somebody uh, like that adds 10% to critical hit chance maybe and gives bonus experience every round yes that sounds very good let's add her so now we are armed and dangerous. This force is probably a good, I don't know, 15-20% deadlier with the general, with the leadership in place than um, without it. So that's rocking, you know. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Now this guy is also coming down. So let's add a general here. And I'm looking for if we have a hero, that'd be awesome. It looks don't look like we do. Uh no, we don't. Um but the hero unit is badass. So if you have a hero unit and it hits somebody, it can stun them which essentially takes them out of the fight for a round, right? They, they, get to, they skip their next turn. Okay, that's badass, right? So you can selectively stun the shit out of the most dangerous unit on the, on the, the map that you're facing and just don't have to worry about him anymore for a turn. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. But we don't have that option. So uh, we will put, I like this, super high defense. So I can... Uh, I can actually expose this slinger to uh, relatively more dangerous situations than the others, and he'll be kind of okay-ish. I mean, I still don't want to uh, be reckless with him, but for instance, like like if we were fighting another battle here, right, and uh, you know we we're fighting guys across the river or something, so I'd put these two in the trees. And I could put him on the scrub. Well, the scrub doesn't provide as much defense, but who cares? Because the general is going to make up the difference. So he's just more versatile. I can put him more places that are maybe slightly riskier, and he's still okay. The other option would be to take the general out of here and put that on the axeman, which would also work, you know. Uh, but yeah, I think we're I think we're in good shape here. And we're going to make this a champions city and that ooh and look at that yeah are we sure they're stronger yeah okay uh well whatever well okay but we have a we have a pretty good force here now we had to we had to take all of our garrisons away to do it 
Uh, but we have a decent, we have a decent force in the field to go stand toe to toe with our rivals or go crunch barbarians or whatever. It took us a while to do that, but you know we 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 have it now. Unfortunately, we need to get our scout. Oh wait, is e yeah, Egypt. So Egypt is at war with the Danes, and looks like they're going to take that pretty quickly so next turn we need to get our scout the hell away from there and back down with our army to do some good because uh, we can't get in the water yet so uh, we're not going to be able to uh, do much up here anyway so yeah let's let's get the scout south down south where he'll do some good that'll be our main focus for the next call it four years maybe just ballpark I don't even know who any of these people are, but I mean, I don't recognize the names or not, but it's free. So sure. If you want to intercess, you go right ahead. I mean, I don't even give a shit. It's, you know, whoever the hell these people are, they're on my staff. And, you know, I mean, it's like, it's like the, the old world equivalent to Linda from accounting for all I know. So, you know, who, anyway, somebody's pissed off and somebody says, Oh, I think I can get, such and so to talk to her and she'll be less pissed off. Well, great, do that. You know, so awesome. More power to you. And I know I could have, you know, looked up in the family tree here and, uh, and, seeing who the hell we were talking about exactly and what their, you know, relations to me are and why they matter. I don't, I, you know, if you want to get to that level of granularity in your game, awesome, do that. That's that's totally, I mean, it, the option is there. You know, all the characters are listed. I could have looked up the names and seen who was what. And, but, yeah, I don't care about those kind of details. I mean, it, when they matter... I care, like like if I take an event and it causes my relations with a certain family family to tank. Okay, I care about that, right? Because uh, like the hunters are really pissed off at me right now, probably because they have the fewest number of cities, and we'll fix that soonish. Um, but yeah, if such and so is mad because you know some body on my staff took the last cup of coffee or whatever. I mean, okay, so what? Go fix it. I don't care. Yep, okay, we're leaving. Let's get to scout the hell out of there before we get boxed in. Okay, and we are really not doing great in the food department so let's fix that like decisively let's just get oh and that border boost card uh, took effect so that's why we have actually good borders and a lot more stuff to play with now and just for your information the border boost card only works on the cities you have at the time the card finishes researching so like the next city that I found will just get crappy original starting borders uh, but I mean that's fair you know that's okay so yeah but this this basically just gave us a jump start in terms of workable tiles and uh, got some new bonus things we can we can play with so and that that's that's all excellent especially since we really need the food okay and I think, yeah, well, we've got enough missile troops now anyway, so let's build uh, a warrior. We can't afford a slinger anyway. And rule of thumb, just please, for me, rule of thumb, uh, don't do the thing where you buy and sell resources to get the troops you want, okay? Don't do that. Build the troops you can afford. Because if you do that, if you go down the road and start to buy and sell to 
to train the troops that you want, you're going to bankrupt your economy and it's going to suck. Don't do that. The right time to buy and sell resources and do that shit is when you're upgrading your existing troops, not when you're trying to train new troops. Train the troops you can afford to train. If you're not happy with your selection, fix your economy. That's the right answer. That's the strongest play. Period. I mean, it just the, mathematically, that's the strongest play. This is sucker's bet. You sell for half price and you buy for full price. You're never going to f- get your economy going. So don't do it. It just, it, it sucks. Um, now you could, you know, somebody come along and say, yes, well, what if, blah, blah, blah. Okay, situationally, there may be a time, very situationally, highly irregular, where it might sort of kind of make sense on occasion to, do I put enough qualifiers in there, to do that. But as a rule of thumb, don't do that. You're going to screw yourself. And when you get into this game, it's very easy to break your economy and get into a resource death spiral. And it sucks to try and get out of it. You can get out of it. And if that should ever happen to you, by the way, the way you get out of it is this. You take about half your workers and you set them to chopping trees. Anywhere you can find trees to chop. The other half of your workers, you take to, you you sell your trees and you buy whatever you need to improve your economy and grow your economy. And you set all of your cities to councils, which gives you more money. And you just basically freeze your empire in that configuration until you fix your economy, which usually takes 10 to 20 years or longer, depending on how badly you fucked it up. And it sucks. So avoid that. Just avoid that. And you'll be fine. And having been there, done that, and gotten the t-shirt, yeah, trust me, avoid it. You, you, you don't want to go there. Yes. Absolutely correct. And, you know, fortunately the game does have a, a mechanism in place that if you do get yourself in trouble, and, I mean, I, I have, even now, even having... Even knowing better, sometimes I screw up and I uh, get myself into a resource trap. And yeah, it it completely sucks to have to, you you just basically kiss a decade of the game goodbye, you know, or, or more. And man, that's brutal. But it is cool that they, you know, they, they've built in uh, a mechanic to... Uh, get you out of it if you if you find yourself in that boat but oh the first time it happened I was like what is going on with the game why does this suck yeah it sucked because I screwed up okay we're not waiting for my scout I mean I don't like just kind of flying blind but I can kind of stick to the trees and, oh yeah, see, that's, that's, that's just beautiful. Look at that. Okay. We're going to give these guys a great big fuck you. And, yeah. I mean, that was just a lucky break. We just stumbled. Can I? Yeah, okay, I can hit him from there. So let's do that. And, oh, we'll, we'll bring our friends next year. Don't you worry about that. That is an awesome site. I mean, just from the look of it. We got lush green land. We're right up against the mountains. There's probably a camp. If I had to, if I'm just having seen a bunch of these maps, there's probably a camp with some game on it somewhere off to the to the west here. Holy crap, that is a great site. We need it. Okay, let's go get it. Uh, what are we, what are we doing here? Okay, and this, this is something that, hey Z, this is something that Spidey has heard me say before, but for the purposes of this strategy, this stra- video strategy guide, I'm going to say it again, and please, if you get nothing else from this video, get this. <clears throat> 
every city you have should have a source of, of stone because stone cutters are freaking amazing as specialists you need them and the reason you need them is because a lot of the all well all of the stuff that you can do to improve your city like the walls but the treasury all this shit and there's more that comes later there's there's archives there's uh, forums there's uh and then the the, the the subsequent builds like walls lead to towers which lead to moats and better treasuries and, and better archives and all, all that shit requires civics well as it turns out stone cutters provide civics and additional stone and research so stone cutters are freaking amazing especially stone cutters that you train on marble special tiles which is what most of these are because they provide an extra point of civics so if you're gonna start training specialists and, and you want to you absolutely want to start with your stone cutters because they're gonna give you more civics which makes training every other specialist you ever train for the rest of the game faster so start with stone cutters right awesome so here we are going to and, and also you don't want to just see here's 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 the other trick right now we're making a surplus of civics and a surplus of uh, training points and we're doing that because our cities are generating uh, or, or we were training a lot of troops but we have uh, we're, we're getting training points from other sources besides our cities Civics, you don't really get as many outside city sources. You get a few. Some of your ministers and stuff provide civics, and that gives you a tiny cushion. But really, until you uh, until you get the tech legal code, you don't have any outside the city way of getting civics. So you don't want to set all of your cities to training specialists at the same time, because if you do, you're going to start running a civics deficit, because this number... This number comes from the sources that we'll show you here. So most of our civics are coming from our cities. If we put all of our cities to training specialists, all that goes away. And the only civics we're going to get is from the queen, the princess, the ambassador, the duchess, and Pepe Le Pew, the prime minister. So we're only going to get like 20 civics a turn, right? But it costs 100 or 200 to conduct diplomatic missions and stuff like that so that's not good math so you can only selectively train specialists you have to be careful about that but you need them so you have to do it but you just got to do it carefully so that you don't run your civics into the toilet so and you want to start with stone cutters because they produce civics which makes it faster for everything else so here we're going to do a stone cutter, but we can't afford to just tie this city up for the better part of a decade doing specialists. We need to do other shit too. So after we do the stone cutter, we're going to wall up because this city is reasonably close to Greece and we're not on fabulous terms with Greece. This city is going to do something similar, by the way, when they get their worker and their garrison, we're going to wall up because we're next to a neighbor that isn't madly in love with us at the moment so we're gonna protect our more exposed cities first and and by building a wall around this city with a garrison in it we're gonna get a minus one reduction to unhappiness which is also awesome so yeah walls are extremely valuable they double the defensive value of your city and with a garrison unit they reduce unhappiness so that's a pretty strong argument for building wall in my case in, in my book anyway so yeah specialists you need them that's going to help slowly grow our research and starting with stone cutters is going to help make all of your other specialists out of this city train faster so every city needs stone tiles so you can get stone cutters and you want to start with them whenever possible I hate this event. I'm going to lose more legitimacy, but I'm going to do it 
because we need to get we need to get and stay on good relations with the church. So Okay, we're not giving up our research. I don't give a shit what it takes. And we're not ready for war. So we are going to grit our teeth and smile and pay up. It sucks, but Greece is stronger. And that's just what you got to do until you get yourself in the position where you can say no and make it stick. And right now, I would rather fight the barbarians and grow easy than fight Greece and stall our expansion. And if that's the price we gotta pay, then that's a bargain, you know? Uh, yeah, we're not doing that. Okay, of the two, I would rather give up civics than what little bit of science we have. I still don't like it but that's going to improve our relations with Greece. I totally want rhetoric so we can get our scout in the water, but we need forestry because it's the last economic tech. So, scouts in the water going to have to wait. And Greece is still not thrilled with us, but they are at least willing to trade. So, we will trade. Now, okay, we're going to pop you, we're going to kill you, move on the camp. And again, uh, this is the this is the slinger with the general who adds mightily to uh, my defense. So yeah, so he's gonna he's in the more exposed position, and I don't care. Sweep the camp. Uh, so he's on last. And I may have been able to kill him by moving to the hill. But. Okay. What is this city? It's my capital. I'm still not going to plunk a settler down there. I'm going to keep filling along our relatively exposed border with arrivals. I want to establish border control with the rivals, and, and this city doesn't do that. We've already got the mountains as a barrier here, and I, I can just tell by looking at it. I mean, I don't know what's here. But it's not a mountain pass, so whatever the hell this is, well, no, it might be. Well, I don't think it is. So whatever the hell this is, it's not really going to help us in terms of establishing national borders. It's, it's, a, it's a filler city. This is not. This is an important frontier city. Not to mention putting it here. I can heal up my guys that can't heal a neutral territory before we head out again. But, 
Oh, and shit, I don't have any orders left to move my scout. So, we are once again going to build a settler out of... Oh, please be righteous, please be righteous. Well, okay, I'll take loyal. That works. Okay. So the other trade-off is I've been using, I've been relying on my capital to drive the expansion effort. And none of the cities that we founded since have great um, food production. And we're only just bringing uh, the food production online because it, it depended on the, the presence of... Uh, of uh, pastures so Assyria is stuck at size Asser is stuck at size one it's it's a, it's a shitty undersized little town and and that's and that's the reason so that was another trade-off with this particular map was ooh, hello vandals All right, well that improved things with the Hunters, even though I was wrong about there being a camp over here, and this is not a, a good hunter site either. Uh, but whatever, we're doing it, we're dealing with it. And look, there's more barbarians, and I'll have two units, I'll have three units ready to rock and roll next turn. That's awesome. All right. That's awesome. So, can we please, before I do anything else and forget again, can we please move this freaking scout down so we're not... Well, you know what? Actually, I do want to move the scout down. But let's move him down this way so I can... Yeah, it's close enough. And no, no mountain pass. The Tandy Wynette Mountain or whatever. Uh, okay. So... Yeah. Okay. This is an amazing start. This is an amazing map. I love it. We're in the far north. Oh, look like Greeks did get that site. So we're going to have our work cut out for us. And they have plonk settlers down. So... Yeah, we slowed them down a little bit, but we didn't prevent them from growing like I, like I thought we would, like I hoped we would. Okay, well, our relationship with Egypt is awesome, so we can afford the hit, it's still awesome, and we get six extra orders. Centralization, almost never worth it, by the way. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, we are going to have our work cut out for us when it comes, well, actually, we need to start building roads pretty much now, but we've just got the food situation resolved. So, low food start, a couple of, it's been a challenging map in in that regard, but, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to get the, the roads laid down, I think, here soonish, and who's over here? What is this? Persia, okay. Persia. Anyway, centralization, almost never worth it. The only time it would make sense is if you're playing a sieve with the sages and your capital is a sages city. Centralization might, might be worth it then. Otherwise, vassalage is the way to go. It's going to increase our resource counts and that it will increase them by more over the course of time. So that's, yeah, the way to go. 
we finally, finally have a silver mine. Let's do that so money just is not a problem as we continue our expansion. And yeah, let's actually, let's do a quick review of exactly how big of a problem we're going to have. Well, this city will be connected if we ever get a settler up there to do it. This city's already connected, so what we're going to have to do is run a road across all these hills and tie onto that river, and then the river will take it to the city. That's all. So we don't have to run it. It saves us a tile. We don't have to run it all the way to the city, but whatever. So that'll connect this one. That's going to be... That's actually going to be pretty easy because this is an urban tile here. So all we have to do is two, two tiles here, here, and we're connected to the fresh water, which is connected back to the capital. So that'll be pretty easy. This one, not as easy. We're going to have to run a road there. We can shorten that by two tiles by building a hamlet and a hamlet because those are urban tiles and then we only have to go from here to here. Or we could do hamlet shrine and then hamlet shrine, well no, because there's no border, so hamlet, and then just run it from there. So that's that's not horrible. We could, we could do that. Okay. So it won't be won't be insurmountable, but yeah, there are some places where it's going to kind of suck. So, but that's the hand we've been dealt, so we'll make it work. All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to get the other food special online, and that's going to help produce the settler that much quicker. And then... We're going to see... Actually, let's take a look. Okay, so... Gazin is not a bad substitute in terms of training settlers. So we might put him on a settler next and then let our capital do something other than build settlers all the freaking time. Okay, uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, and even though Greek Greece did not trade with us, if we pay them get more money we'll get a 40 percent relationship boost and we can immediately try to trade with them again well or we could if we had the civics to do it which we don't so we'll wait till next year and try to trade with them again in the meanwhile let's send our scout down here Get our slinger back. And we're just going to beat the hell out of these guys. Um... Uh, well, we just met the Vandals. Uh, the Danes, the only site that I know about, was up here, and the Egyptians were already pounded on them. Uh, so Egypt was able to... We did our best to contain them, but they were able to get around us. So these would have been some great city sites for us, but we'll 
We'll have to see what happens. Um, so I don't even know where there are any other Danes, and this is the only Vandals I know about. Uh, I can't imagine they belong for the world because if we don't take them out, the Greeks will. And I would rather that we did it. And as far away as Persia is, my God, they could have eaten up half the map by now. We don't even know. <clears throat> if they started off in a food rich area and compared to compared to what we've got, yeah, they could be twice our size. No. No, the right answer is to Okay, let's get in here and look. Yeah, we do not want to attack from this tile because that's a cross river attack. So we're going to come over here. Get that shit out of them. Can you heal a neutral territory? No. So, get closer to the fight. settler down out of this city give the capital a break yeah we'll just take peace we're already on pretty good terms with them anyway so She still has a positive relationship, a positive opinion. Uh, that works. Yeah, uh, we've been pretty. Uh, there we go. Actually, we got. What happened to him? I forget. I forget how he died. When he died. Anyway, we exiled the shit out of him for a while. But yeah, three kids. Um, three grandkids so far. Okay. Hey, where did our thing go? Okay. Uh, 
Uh, we just have to enact that law. And we don't have the... We don't have the civics to do it. We've got the tech. We just don't have the... We just don't have the civics at the moment. And we keep... Uh... We keep spending the civics as fast as we can get it, get them. Okay. So let's first and foremost give the workers jobs. Okay, not bad. And we didn't get a chance to move our... Uh, no, okay, we can do this. Because we're not going to... Yeah, I don't know what to do about you. You're just going to stay put. Okay. Yeah, not a big fan of... Uh, not a big fan of this the slavery thing, and I don't like the unhappiness uh, kick. And unfortunately, no, steadfast. The only thing it does is just uh, the twenty-five percent bonus to uh, fighting the barbarians, barbarians and tribes, which is a good bonus, but it, it is an early game bonus. Okay, worker job assignments. Absolutely got to do it. And let's start. Tell you what, let's start. I'm going to build that hamlet here. It says it's only going to give me 10 gold but that's because it's not on the trade network. But that's one less road tile I have to build. And then, yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's not a really, unless your starting ruler dies young, really, by the second generation, you're pretty much done with the barbarian tribes. Although, you know, the same thing that could be said... Uh, like with the champions, they're, they're one of their big family bonuses is Steadfast, which, you know, fades after the early game. But, my lord, during the early game, you just curb stomp every barbarian you run across. So, that's awesome. Wait a minute. Why am I... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, right, I build, I build the hamlet here, I build one road tile here, and we're done. That city's connected. Alright, cool. So that's done. Let's get our scout out doing his thing. Oh, tremendous. We have met the Gauls. Outstanding. And I've got one. What do we have up here? What are we? What are we doing? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Train a rancher.
need better troops. Hello, Danish people. Didn't help much. Helped a little. Yeah, I I I really enjoyed Civ Four. I really did. Kind of miss it. Um, yeah, but I don't have a I don't have a, a deal maker leader, so unfortunately I uh, can't build any caravans. Oh. Oh. Huh. <laughs> okay. I think we just won the game. Yeah, I think we just won the game. Um, Greece has joined Team Zorro. So. And everyone is now in love with us. Okay, um, that's big. <clears throat> we need to get... We need to prioritize training a missionary. A uh, disciple, rather, so we can... Um, start improving our uh, religion, start adding to it. Okay. Uh, Gozon is currently training settlers for us, so we want to do that first. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we've been on pins and needles the entire game, worried that somebody might attack us. Now that everyone is uh, happy with us, this this feels pretty good. And we're, unfortunately, the Sherbanopol is uh, getting a little long in the tooth. So he will probably die soon. Uh, he's been a good leader for us. The upshot to that is 
that uh, when his daughter takes over, she's pretty solid leader, and uh, <clears throat> she'll be able to ruin influence missions with all the leaders to, you know, uh, bolster our relationship with them again further. Okay, do the same thing here. Gonna do a hamlet. And then we're gonna start building some roads. Once again, we're not sending that settler uh, up to the north. Okay, we're going to finally do something other than build uh, settlers out of the capital. And I think to make up for some lost time, we're going to train a rancher. We don't have any... Uh, well, we will... I just haven't improved it yet. We don't have any stone here yet. I'm going to make a stone triad. Or actually, I'll probably just do all four of those as uh, quarries. So when we get to that point, I will make stone cutters. But we've been a little busy with other stuff. Uh, and I had other cities doing stone. So they kind of got a pass. But I will, I will get back to that, and we will make stone cutters for the capital. Okay. Oh, we'll go be an artist. We can afford it. Okay. Queen is dead. Long live the queen. Yeah. Get over here. We don't give a shit about you. Ooh. Wait now. When we get to this point in the game where I've got cities that, you know, my economy's pretty robust. I've got cities that are that are new, that haven't really had, the workers haven't really had much time to develop them yet. I, I do that. I just queue up a bunch of builds, put in the forum first dish. Actually, I put the forum very first because that's going to help with the uh, with the specialist too. So, yeah, just queuing up some stuff to give the worker time to continue improving tiles and then we can come back and start getting a little pickier about uh, what, what exactly we have them do. But right now the city is too small to materially contribute anyway and so I'm just going to have him work on some basic stuff that will make this city useful a bit later on. Right now, it's just not very useful.
sure if I want to do that. I think I want to come out and get this. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're not we're not doing that. Yeah, we're not doing that. But well, let's see if we can now that we have a well you know what, now that we're on good terms with both of them, I think I'm not gonna do another trade mission for right now. Um I think we're just gonna sit on that. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to do that anyway. So, awesome. We still don't have the civics to enact freedom. But, unfortunately, it does not. It starts the counter at zero from the time you accept. So, yeah, I don't even know if there are five barbarian sites left at this point. Unfortunately, the way the early game developed, we lost like a decade of scouting. So, the map is really, we haven't uncovered near as much as I would like. Um, but we are slowly making up for some lost time. Okay, Queen Ass Hat the new. Do some basic Diplo stuff there. Okay, so next year we will start, well, next year he will move down to here, build a shrine of some description, 
and then we'll have our road go in here and then we'll this this worker when he finishes we'll start also with the road building we'll get everybody connected up <sighs> Okay. Yeah, I know. I uh <clears throat> I wish I had more orders. <laughs> I would love to be able to start moving that scout around again. But if I have to pick between securing a campsite or growing the economy and moving the scout, the scout's got to wait. But hopefully, I think we... I don't think we'll have... Oh, shit, I was wrong about that. We got four workers that need orders. Okay, so you're going to come here. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I call that up. Oh, you're, okay. I moved, this is the wrong guy. This guy needs to... Come over here. This guy needs to come down this way. Uh, what did you just do? Okay, what are we, right, we need to fix this, we need to fix this, we need to move this guy closer to the borders again, and I keep hoping <laughs> we have enough orders to actually move the scout.
whereas next year we're going to have another settler ready. And what is all this business with Greece or with uh, Egypt putting troops on my border? I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. I need to influence her, so yeah. We will just have to take the we will just have to take the hit. finally going to get to put uh, a city here and we'll get to do it on the last turn of this uh, video. I'll stop the video at turn 50. I am going to save this game though because when I do, when I get to the uh, I mean I want to do the, the first 50 turns, the early game for every sieve. But then, when I get to the next phase, which is, okay, now what happens next? This is probably the game that I will continue from, because it's pretty awesome. I, I'm really liking the way this is shaping up. So, yeah, I will uh, will save off after the completion of this next turn. And... Uh, Okay, now that's a trade I will definitely take. We get science from Egypt, and we just give up a little bit of food. Oh, that's fine. We're gonna need more stone. We're gonna need more stone than that.
Okay. All right. And that is where we will leave it for this segment. I'm going to get these posted on YouTube to serve as a, uh, a guide for new players looking for tips on how to get established in the early game as arbitrarily defined by 50 years. Um, as you can see, we still have a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, we are just in the process of road connecting some of our cities that aren't just naturally connected to the trade network. Um, that process shouldn't take terribly long. Uh, but it is critically important. We are, over the past five decades, we have managed to found a religion. Both of our neighbors have switched to it. Both of them kind of love us. Relationships with our vassal families are generally strong. Um, both of our neighbors are listed as stronger than we are, but we are not completely inept militarily. I mean, we actually have, you know, uh, well, we have close to a dozen units. Uh, they're not great. They're kind of bottom, bottom tier units. Eight cities in 50 years, that's a relatively average-ish expansion. But we have more potential sites to expand into. We've got the Vandals, we've got the Danes, the Gauls. So there's, there's plenty more opportunities available. And we're expanding at a good clip. The economy is reasonably strong. The only thing we're really struggling with is food because our our starting cities were in kind of a food poor region, but the land is getting increasingly lush as we settle new territory, and you know, that it, and once we got animal husbandry, we were able to bring more food online, so. We're, I think those problems are basically a thing of the past, and we are poised for bigger and better. So, this is where we'll leave it, and like I said, I'll, I'll probably use this as the game to pick up uh, once I get the videos done for the other Civ's first 50 turns. Uh... Trade network. Let's see. There you go. So we've got most of our cities connected. Uh, still got some work to be done here, but like this, that'll be done in just a couple of turns or next turn. And then we just connect our latest city build and we should be in pretty good shape yes and when I originally built this is just a just to uh, Just to demonstrate, when I built this hamlet, this was not on the trade network, so it only was generating 10 gold. Uh, now that it is connected to the trade network, it is generating t 20, which is double. The northeast one. You mean this guy up here? Yeah, we will... Uh, when these workers finish we'll dispatch 
at least this worker and then this one when he gets finished training and uh, build a road network probably along the eastern side of this uh, ridge on the thinking that if an attack were to come it's going to come from this way and our troops can move without or with minimal interference oh yeah yeah well this this whole area this is just ripe for conquest I mean and we got the guys to do it too we got uh, three slingers and an axe and if we can I mean we don't know exactly what else is here but our scouts well positioned to to tell us but yeah man that whole area is uh, oh, that's prime real estate right there and there's some game tiles so that's cool hunters will actually have a couple of cities that are that are useful to them which is awesome so I'm gonna leave it here and I probably won't get started on the next first 50 turns video today but I'm just doing them in alphabetical order so the next one up will be Babylon so and Babylon has a little bit different of a starting situation because uh, like with the Assyrians, especially with the Assyrians, starting with the champion's family, our starting slinger was basically indestructible. I mean, compared to uh, barbarian tribes that just put, you know, a, a champion slinger with steadfast, with a general that further enhances the combat capability. It, there's not a an early game barbarian on the map that's going to stand up to that. Babylon doesn't have that. Babylon just has a garden variety slinger. So you do the, the approach to the game is a little bit different. I could be fast and loose with Assyria. You have to be very cautious with uh, Babylon if you're going to expand and, and try to use your singular uh, slinger to take on barbarian camps. You can do it, but it does require a little bit different approach. So we'll get into that uh, in the next video, but I hope that new players have found this to be useful, and I'll post it on YouTube now. See you later.